Boston Celtics have one roster spot remaining. Over the next week or so, we're going to be looking at different options available to them in terms of players. And we're going to start with a big fish. We're starting with Kelly Oubre Jr., who's coming off a highly productive season for the Charlotte Hornets, but also a highly inefficient season. Now, part of that is because of the injuries that were around him. If you look at the Hornets roster last year, LaMelo Ball went down with a broken ankle. We all know Gordon Hayward's going to be in and out of the rotation due to injuries. And that forced Oubre Jr. into a role that was probably a little bit too big for him with volume that's above where he would be most efficient. So because of that, he, sh he scored a lot of points, but he did it on a bucket load of attempts. Anywhere else that Oubre Jr. signs, he won't have that type of volume again. He won't have that type of role so now he has two choices available to him, right? He can either re-sign with the Charlotte Hornets on a one-year or a multi-year deal and then slot into his usual role with that team now that LaMelo Ball will likely be back. Brandon Miller's there now, so he's going to need as many touches as possible to help his development. Hayward will be healthy when, when possible, and then Terry Rozier will be there too. So Oubre can slot back into a lower-volume role where he could potentially be a productive member of that rotation and help them push for a playoff place. Or, and I think this makes sense for Ubre at this point, he could sign with a contending team. He could take less money on a one-year deal, play a role on a contending team, potentially really impressed due to a smaller role and lower usage, and then be in a strong position to negotiate a contract to next summer, potentially with a championship ring on his finger, being able to say that he was a conducive member of a rotation that he was able to put up, put up points within a specific role and help a team challenge for a championship. The latter makes sense to me. 2024 is going to be a good free agency class. Teams will have cap space to spend. Once the top dogs are gone off the board, Oubre Jr. might be one of the bigger names after a strong season that could reap the benefits and the cap will go up again, which will make it a little bit more palatable to be giving him similar to what he earned this past season, which was, let me double check, just so I'm being factual, $12.6 million. Now, the Celtics can't offer that type of money. They have a trade exception from the Grant Williams deal, but if they did a sign and trade to acquire Rubre Jr., they'd be hard capped. So that's not going to happen. They have their taxpayer mid-level exception, but if they use it, they're hard capped. So that's not going to happen either. All that leaves is trying to sell Oubre Jr. on a veteran minimum deal. Now, we've just gone over the reasons why Oubre Jr. would do it, but he could make more money elsewhere. The only thing going in Boston's favor in terms of this deal is that the majority of cap space teams have used up the majority of their cap space. So there isn't really many landing spots left for Oubre Jr. other than remaining with Charlotte or going to a team like San Antonio that still has some cap space, but he's not going to be in a position to contend. So we will see why, where Oubre Jr.'s head's at in terms of contention or money. Now, at 27 years old, Oubre Jr. can sign for money and worry about chasing a championship ring later in his career. But I just have a belief in me that you should contend whenever possible and then lean on that contention and potential championship to try and find yourself long-term money that can carry you through any potential injuries that occur as you get older. And I think that Boston would welcome another wing that can score, that can defend to a certain amount of level and would be able, wouldn't take too many minutes away from somebody like Jordan Walsh that's going to be in and out of the rotation as he spends time in Maine. And what I mean by wouldn't take too many minutes away is Ubre Jr. can slide down and play that two guard spot and be big the same way Boston used it with Jalen Brown or he can play the free, uh, the free and play behind Jason Tatum when Walsh isn't in that rotation. Now, I want to look at his stats a moment because I did say that they were inefficient, but I think it's good to kind of put this into perspective. Okay, so look, he averaged 20.3 points per game, 5.2 rebounds per game, and 1.1 assists, 1.4 steals. That's great. We all like the counting stats. We all like the butt score numbers, but, you know, the game isn't played in a butt score. What did he do shooting-wise? He shot 31.9% from three on 7.1 attempts per game. That is shockingly in line with his attempts per game with Charlotte during the season prior. But if you look at the rest of his career, he has been around that for like that four to five, three to five type of shots per game ratio. That would likely drop a little bit more down to around that three per game. And he hasn't been incredibly efficient throughout his career, 33%. Now, this would be a big knock on his ability 
to fit into a John Mazzula offense, right? Where it is pace and space. You do take your open freeze. The, di- the only thing I will say is he hasn't really had the elite talent around him apart from his season with Golden State. And even then he wasn't shooting great. So that's a knock, right? Because when you're spaced with Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, that's going to be a big role for you. Actually, to be fair, Clay Thompson probably wouldn't have played that season because he was out with an injury. So, but you still got Steph Curry with you, and you know he's going to be taking the majority of the defensive attention. So coming into Boston, he's going to have the Jason Tatum, the Jalen Brown attention, the Chris Stapps, Paul Zingas. There's going to be a ton of space available. Ideally, though, you don't really want him shooting too many frees because he's just not that efficient from there. Instead, you'd want him pressuring the rim. You'd want him coming off, um, you know, entry screens to, or Iverson cuts to hit those mid-range jumpers around the elbow. And he's just going to be another guy to consume minutes when Tatum or Brown need to sit. Ideally, you want him to be a little bit efficient, but he is one of the better names left on the free agency market that's going to be able to spell those minutes for you. Get him at the free throw line. He's averaged 75%. That's fine. Three out of four shots. Cool. I'm down with that. I'm not huge on his defensive upside, but if the Celtics are truly going to play some zone, he has the length and wingspan to be able to fit into a zone defense. He's going to be okay in a schematic defensive system, and he's not somebody teams are going to be targeting too heavily when they're already probably going to be looking to attack Sam Hauser or Peyton Pritchard. As a 15th man on the roster, or the final roster spot, we should say, this would be a good deal for Boston. Kelly Oubre would make perfect sense across multiple boards here. But one thing I will say is that he's not a perfect player. Nobody you're getting at this point in free agency is a perfect player. There's reasons to be against him. There's reasons to be for him. For me, I just think that as much as, and you can see this in the last video that I did, as much as I have belief that Jordan Walsh could, could hang in the NBA during the regular season, and I genuinely believe he could because of his defense. The offense leaves you a little bit concerned, and with Joe Mazzulli certainly looking towards a more offensive type of system, he has mentioned in, in recent days or recent weeks that, you know, the team, he is going to be a little bit more open to being defensively focused. But Joe Mazzulli's bread and butter is as an offensive coach. A pace and space, modern, run and gun, 21 action, zoom action type of offensive coach where you, the only time you pressure the rim is to generate kick-out opportunities or to keep defenses honest and make sure they continue to collapse. Ubre can do that for you. He can attack off the rip through. He can be that off-ball cutter that catches and finishes around the rim. He can be a guy that curls off a, a gut screen and hits that pull-up jumper from 14, 15 feet away. That will be Ubre's role. He would slot into a Jalen Brown style of offense quite seamlessly. He's not going to be the catch-and-shoot guy that Jason Tatum is, where Jason Tatum excels more on the catch than he does off the dribble. He's not that guy. And that's okay. You're getting him on a veteran minimum deal. Now, not many veterans coming in are 27 years old, averaging 20 points last season, or be on an inefficient shooting, you know, shot 41.3% from the field. I still think that there's a lot of upside there. Again, in a smaller role, within a team that's got a winning culture, within a team that has enough spacing and enough pace to bring the best of you out, while also hiding some of your flaws, Kelly Oubre Jr. makes a ton of sense. Does he, is he perfect? No. I'm very curious to see whether everybody watching this video believes that Ubre Jr. could be a guy that you target or whether you think that there's better fits that obviously the talent isn't as high, but the schematic fit is far better. Is there anybody that you guys have your eye on? Let me know in the comments. I'll do a video on them. I'm going to try and bring people on so there's more than just my voice too, but we'll get around to that. I'm still finding my feet in how I want to promote, move, do this content moving forward. If you want some deep dives, I've got you. I'm going to be doing more NBA play breakdowns on, on shorts on this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, that like button, do all that great stuff. And I'll be back again tomorrow. Peace.